Welcome guys, it's the Market Sniper. Thank you for being followers. I want to be uh, grateful to all of you that have been following the channel continues to grow consistently. What am I going to tell you today? Uh, I'm going to throw an aspersion to you, uh, a possibility. It's a dangerous one to do because it's exceedingly early to do so. And when you try to be too early, you usually get stung. So this is not about being right or wrong, but I'm going to stick my head out uh, and likely get a, uh, a bunch of chopping and say there could be a higher than probability chance that you have experienced a turn in the dollar. It could be uh, that you've had a higher than expected chance that we've had a turn in the dollar. That's right. That means the sell-off that has been occurring on the dollar index for all this period to the downside uh, that has continued for some time, run about October odd, mid-Octobers, all the way non-stop, all the way through Christmas, January, da 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 etc., etc., could be turning. So let's cover a couple of key points that happened last week that made last week a seminally very important week. So you, first of all, you had a lot of heavyweights in the tech sector reporting, not just uh, the tech sector. In fact, you also have Exxon, uh, Rockefeller Oil, a number of others, but Apple, uh, Google, Amazon, uh, Faceache, uh, etc. Uh, they all reported. And then you also had a combination of other big, big, big events that were critical, and that was rate hikes, rate hikes for both the Fed, which is the biggest one in terms of dollar overall performance, uh, and that was a 0.25%, uh, 25 basis points. You also had, simultaneously, the ECB and the Bank of England, which, whilst not uh, as significant uh, overall, were is pretty important uh, central bankers. Both went for 50 basis points. Now, I've said many times before, a large part of the reason for trusts being thrown under the bus was because the Bank of England was raising rates at a slower rate than the US dollar. That ended up seeing money that was in uh, gilts, British debt, being sold off and going where it's treated best. Remember, mac global macro hedge fund money can move anywhere in the world. Uh, gilts can be sold off and they can go to the other side of the world and be bought again and get a higher yield and an appreciating currency at the same time. Uh, what that ends up doing is A, it increases the sell ladder and B, it disincentivizes new buyers into the likes of Bank of England debt. So you get an absence of bid and you get an increase of sell. And what do you get? You get a, a little bit of a crisis that was experienced some time ago now with both the pound and the debt markets. Note how both were affected. In other words, not only is it money getting out of the debts. It wasn't getting out of the debt and buying the FTSE. It was getting out of the debt and selling the pound and getting into something else, which probably was the expectation of ongoing dollar strength and ongoing uh, support, either for dollar debt or for dollar equities or other asset classes. So um, this time it was the other way around. So you had both the ECB and the British uh, Bank of England Bailey going for half a point. Um, and that's now a little bit of catch up from uh, them, which has seen our Euro knock trade, which I'll go past, that's now made target that we had as a community. We shared it through Twitter. Please follow if you want to stay up to date there. Um, occur. So the eventuality was we've had a Euro period of good strength. Uh, for the euro, and I say strength inverted commas. Remember, these are all fatally flawed currencies, fatally flawed fiat system against each other. This is a relative strength argument. Whenever we're talking about strength, it's relative to one another. Um, so that that occurred uh, last week, uh, and that was deeply significant. And then on Friday, during our live trading day, we actually had an outlier event of craziness and i've said this before there's a departure between what the non-farm payrolls with the birth death model spits out as a number of jobs created and what other surveys are showing as jobs created but we've got an outlier major bullish uh 500 000 plus uh, new jobs created in the US on an exp expectation of around 197 so it was about 512 it was an absolute blowout good, strong, note the inverted commas number. 
uh, that was that that came about. So what does that mean? Well, that means in essence, or how will it be interpreted? Uh, I have great suspicions about that number, and as I've already highlighted, and its departure from other surveys. But let's just accept the official fact for now, uh, without any further questioning, and say, what do we? What does it mean for the dollar? That well, it means a strong economy, which means the possibility is still there a strong labour. Uh, market economy, in other words, jobs creation, a strong labor market economy, meaning that uh, given the recent revised, remember they didn't accept that this was a recession when they had two quarters of negative growth. They said there's no sign of loss of power or decay in the employment and the jobs market. So they are hiding behind jobs. They're taking refuge behind jobs on the basis that it's not a uh, recession on the growth constriction on account of the fact that people are still working and there's plenty going on. So they need this non-farm payroll fluff number. Uh, and this was a super fluff number that came in, in my personal opinion. But who knows? I'm just a YouTuber here who watches economics. Uh, and it continues to highlight that there's actually maintained very good strength, despite all the tech companies announcing 10% layoffs here, 10% layoffs there, everywhere, etc. Um, there's a gorgeous market for jobs at the moment, apparently, in America. Now, many people anecdotally that are currently in America will probably give me, leave their comments below. Please feel free to. How's the job market, by the way, my American friends? Please let us know in the comments below. Um, but the, the opinion being that if that number is believed, that there is more scope and more room to tighten, there is a robust employment market and you do not need to wish uh, or worry, more importantly, about this aspect of the economy. It's, uh, and that as aspect is the missing link to accepting a re recession. So on the basis of that non-farm payroll numbers that came out on Friday, in actual fact, there clearly is no recession. Yes, note the, the manner in that which that is said, even though the definition's already been met. Um, and there's actually in the opposite, we're going to double down on our lie and give you, in fact, it's, it's a booming situation. So let's turn to the charts and have a look what happened. Uh, and when you get such a seminal week as last week, one of the key things you should bear in mind and remember is that the market digests that America's right, right, right far west. So a lot of the Easterners may even be in bed. Uh, the, the real pros will have stayed up, but uh, most of the most of the screen jockeys will be in bed. If you're in Hong Kong, Australia or wherever, it'll be very, very late uh, or possibly early morning on a Saturday uh, for them. So there's no opportunity really to reflect an opinion in the market. They have two days to digest and sit on it. And the Sunday session becomes critical. After a heavy, heavy data week, and let me just say these weeks aren't typical. I mean, the only thing that's missing here is an option expiry, a triple witching option expiry thrown in as well. Um, you, you have an entire year being put to bed. You're getting a lot of central bank of all the three majors of the Western part of the world. And then you get a, an, an, an economic number like non-farm payrolls all coming. Plus the mega caps, the oligarchical mega caps, many of them with market caps bigger than most countries, um, all reporting as well. So there was a lot to digest. You might find then on that Sunday session, particularly in FX, as the markets open in Asia, Japan, Hong Kong, uh, the Asia pack, the whole area, that you get quite a reaction to that. It almost feels like a delayed reaction, although some of them might have already seen the numbers, but will think about it and only really start to reflect. So let's check those charts as I was threatening to do and go straight to the screen here and show you the USD JPYII. Here she comes. So you'll know this fellow, he had a full melt up and final move. He popped out the top of this rising wedge. Let's show you that again so that you know where we're drawing. We're talking about this. He popped out the top and went for a blow off run through the 150. That was the bull market. That was in and around the back end of mid October going into the third week of October. From there, descending triangle you did get, trying to hold a level there, trying to hold a level. 
a lot of selling coming across the, stop, the top, a super low uh, top on that third impulse. And that turned into a thriller, an absolute spiller. Down, 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 she did go, she did go, she did go, she did go. Uh, faster than a prostitute's jaws to the floor. That's right, and down she went. Uh, and so we had this broadening structure, we've had this channel, we've had uh, a lot of continuation breaks down, down. In fact, this was a double up and entry point for us on the upside, a falling wedge that we spoke about. And in fact, this is one of the YouTubes we did during this period last year, if you were following us in May, June. We pointed out how this little fractal of a small HVF inside of a falling wedge gave us a really, really tight risk loss for extra entries with a great run reward and so it did reward indeed it did indeed eventually there was a sell off there only to grind up further further for the 150 run well that threw down an, a whole spate of key levels of significance for us because it was the falling wedge as well as that fractal on the small time frame and they were down there and it turns out you seem to have found a degree of support in and around the target levels and these key levels of significance um, now, the Sunday open, this is typically known as a breakaway gap. Now, invariably, these are news-based events often. Uh, so in equities, it'll be a kind of earnings report or a director resigning or disclosure of insider buying, insider selling or, you know, various fundamental type factors. So this would have been also the, the Eastern reaction for those that were closed to the fact of the dollar. Now, one of two things will occur. And this is why I say there's a a higher than usual probability that this may be a turn, but it can also still not be a turn. So it's not a, a hard call, it's a, it's a put you on notice call. What can happen is that gap can be technically closed and you can continue up, or you can just continue up. Those are the two bull scenarios that would point to uh, the bottom for the descent in the dollar now being in. In fact, almost being oversold. Uh, technically because now the focus on the interest rates is on what will the Fed do next especially given the super supportive number that they got on the non-farm payrolls just this Friday past. Um, the the uh, the way that this turns into just another rally and we've had a lot of rallies if you were a bottom caller you could have called the bottom there you could have called the bottom there you could have called and many did by the way this is the first time we're coming on youtube and saying there's a possibility of the bottom and we do expect to be wrong when we are calling against a trend uh, in short the trend is well established and is currently down in terms of a significant time frame we've got it on the 12 hourly but it holds for the daily it holds for the four hourly it's uh, it's been a, quite a substantial bear trend since uh, the the back half of october last year however eventually trends do change um, and but how could this die and make us uh, look foolish um, well, it would close the gap and then have a strong capitulation back down. You'll notice I've also drawn this broadening structure over here. It could sit on that broadening floor a little bit, wind up. It might be it just needs a new reason to sell lower and it's found temporary support and this is equally plausible. So as I say, I'm not going majority in on any one. There is a major inflection point coming here and it's going to be a big tell. Um, it may need a little bit of a wind up, do a small HVF here on our basing ascending grind line and do a spiller and run it. And that's how we'd get to be wrong if we were biasing to the bottom call. Um, so here we are in the end. What is it going to be? Well, it's interesting to take a look at this across all the other currencies because I can tell you next week, Friday, and talking to you on a Monday afterwards, it's not going to have anything like the same significance. It's on account of events and new focus on the news now being baked in. What tends to happen is people sell on the rumor that was the 0.25 and cover on the fact as it comes in or just before the fact. Uh, so this large sell periods that were going in could indeed be the Fed are going to slow down. Remember, there's insiders. If you think we're getting the information the same time everybody else is getting the almost guaranteed nod, tick and a wink, I'm afraid to say we don't have that luck uh, of really true free markets. But it was certainly getting very baked in that 
it's likely that the, the US market will be slower on its rate increase. So remember, that isn't a cutting. That's still a rate increase in an environment where the bulk of the rates effect is still to bite because it has been one of the quickest rising four back to back uh, three quarter points, 75 basis points times four back to back. So a lot of this effect is still to roll in and they've still done more to put it up another two, five uh, points. So it's only the rate at which the increase is occurring rather than the actual speed. So this is acceleration versus speed again, as I've given you so many examples. So that the, the, the likelihood of things breaking uh, as the rates go higher continues to get worse. Remember, many corporations are in a position where they need to look at uh, rolling over debt. 70% of the listed corporations actually have debt that rolls during the course of this uh, year. That's all going to be locked in at new rates, which are substantially higher. Okay, so that's uh, the USD JPY, how we'd be right, how we'd be wrong. Core structural support area for now, although we haven't got out of this megaphone, for now it's a gap up uh, Sunday. However, anything that shows the closing of the gap tips the balance to being much more 50-50. It already is quite close to 50-50. It's maybe a 55 possible turn, um, 45 not. But you go back to 50-50 if you close the gap. And if you have any real momentum back to the downside during the course of this week. So if, uh, I don't feel there's a particularly uh, major news that are coming, but we can do a little look forward. Um, if technically you see that decay, then that could also point to, okay, hold on. It's more about getting through this level of support than being a reversal. However, within that, on a smaller time frame, there is also, this is what happens with patterns. You get uh, the pattern that is the possible broadening structure that I've drawn for you. But also, if I clear the face uh, and go into the blue, you also have this reasonable standard W bottom, which would project a target somewhere around here, around 135. And you have this breakaway gap that has occurred very close to that neckline for the W. So you actually have two conflicting patterns. And of course, you've also broken the channel, which means you're no longer in the same rate of descent that doesn't it, it implies a possible bottom. It doesn't guarantee a bottom. That just could mean you could churn for a while and continue lower, but you're certainly not going down at the same rate of descent. So there is a higher possibility. So the message behind this video is there's a higher possibility than is usual after a particularly news heavy event that any change of direction is semi permanent and could imply a bottom in the dollar. Now that has repercussions for the equity markets. It has repercussions for crypto. It has repercussions for the euro. Uh, we can, we'll pop over to our euro knock shortly and we'll show you. But let's have a look at some of those other currency pairs that are against the dollar and what happened there. So whilst we pivot on away, we can show you, for example, the USD Korean one. This is one that we still have a huge dollar milkshake upside expectation and are waiting a floor low and now we'll ask is that it again a breakaway again a bit more of a wedge than a channel on this one so there was a tiny bit more squeezy squeezy japanesey and kimchi land and as a result uh, you're getting a nice little bump 1250 is a very very crucial and key level um, that was a very key level for us on the upside. That was a secondary go along. We smashed, we, we paused there, we bounced around and then went lower. So that was a classic case of a support level being taken out to the downside. It came a lot earlier on this one. There is the funnel level. So you can see the fact that you ran the funnel there, even though you rallied, is usually an implication that you will take it to the downside. Normally you expect to see support, something like that. By the time you're coming back and you run it, even though you have a reaction, the expectation is you will be coming back down faster. And that's what happens. This is HVF method, by the way. So if you're learning anything and you appreciate this quick summary of what's happened as a result of last week, uh, we appreciate it if you fool the algo with the puppy lick, which is the thumbs up button. Um, and if you want to book a call to speak to any of us, go to themarketsniper.com. Uh, my team are awaiting you and we'll look after you with 
uh, soft glove hands. Um, so let's carry on with this overview. While we're here, we can see the Euro Norwegian Krona. So we warned that the Euro was going to be rather strong and dominant and that longs to the upside could perform rather well. People that don't understand the method, um, one guy was complaining that he got uh, taken out on the downside. Remember, if I say we think something's going to run 11, um, that doesn't mean it's going to go straight there. Uh, and we have a method. Our community didn't get stopped out because they know where to place their stop losses. They know how to trade an HVF uh, and they know what to expect when we run interim targets and many other things. Um, in the as, uh, absence of proper trading training, you should never just take a trade. It's proper gambling. Develop skills. Uh, there's so much to this money management and all uh, that should be taken on board. As you can see, you're getting quite a nice little burn of overperformance here as the 11 has indeed been run. Uh, but the bulk, uh, in fact, in my case, everything is closed. We only do overperformance in this ex uh, exceptional case cases. And I'm quite happy I have eaten uh, well and the closure was roughly approximating that uh, for a pretty decent uh, risk reward trade. Um, so you can do this too. But you need training and you need to understand. So that was the euro benefiting while the dollar was having a final capitulation. But let's have a look at another aspect that's really interesting. This deals uh, with um, China and Hong Kong. So I'm going to take you back up. We have called for uh, the peg to be something that will fail, the Hong Kong dollar to be folded away. And the interesting part about the dollar weakness, let's take uh, most of you first to the Dixie and we'll come back to this. You can see that the whilst the high point was in and around September the 28th of the Dixie, uh, you started a very nasty spill literally from that high from 3rd of November and you've been going all the way down till the beginning of Feb. 3rd of November, all of November, all of December, all of January. Now, if we go back, and we'll come back to this Dixie, by the way, again, another very, very violent, strong reversal that has taken place. And you have broken out of the broadening structure to the downside that we call a slide, a volatility slide. Um, so if we go, whoops, not the euro, we want the Hong Kong dollar again. Let me take you back. While we're on the euro, just look at that channel. I'd actually drawn that previously. We had a little bit of a break out of the broadening structure here for the euro. And there it goes in that channel. It's an absolute spill now. It's a spill where at one point almost was 110. What was your high? High is 110.33. Uh, and now you're at 107 looking for 106s. So that's quite brutal and quite uh, vast by return. So we got those dates. November was a real key turn. It wasn't the high point, but it was viciously down from the 2nd of November right the way to the 2nd of Feb. However, as weak as the dollar was against most currencies, look what was happening on the Hong Kong dollar. The Hong Kong dollar has continued to lose ground against the US dollar right the way up through all its weakest periods, giving us a number of continuations along the way, bringing us almost back to the intervention level pegs that we've covered previously. Very close to that point where once again, um, the Hong Kong uh, Monetary Authority, HKMA, will start intervening on behalf of its currency. Yes, terrible idea, of course. Um, and I want to contrast this with the dollar's performance against the Chinese one. Um, totally different. So what we're actually seeing is the Chinese one is appreciating against the dollar. This is a head and shoulders. So let's just uh, wipe our face again here. This is a head and shoulders, left, head and right. That is a triggering event and hammer. That was a uh, hammer. A flag, bear flag, uh, that was the trigger of the bear flag. You still have outstanding targets here for both the flag and this potential head and shoulders. So the notion of calling bottom on dollar may well not hold if those targets are still to be run. And it's rare that you perform so adequately for so long only to stop a millimeter. It's kind of like you're running the marathon 
and doing the 41 and a half miles and refusing to take the last 100 meters to collect your medal and run the tape. Typically, when you're this close, targets do uh, tend to occur and uh, you would expect them to happen. So once again, you may have a bit of a broadening structure implying with an ascent to it, implying continuation to the downside. But it has to be said, this momentum is super strong um, and you would need a pretty effective reversal to commence almost immediately because the minute you start going a little higher, you're potentially in the field of further uh, dollar strength. Now, could this dollar strength just be a period of rally for a while and we could go back to even further weakness. So let's say we get a month. It's a reasonable period. It could be hard on the crypto guys. It could be hard on gold and silver. Don't forget. So this is, I'm going to pitch you both sides of the story and you're truly going to decide. I haven't committed either way in any great scale. Um, what you could get, and I'm going to show you now is the head and shoulders in red that I've shown you that you still have the target to make. What if he cries? What if? And I'm going to just show you something on a far larger scale with regards to the dollar and the one. This is not, and people say, but it's manipulated. There's no point doing charts. Yes, you can see the manipulation and you can see when they let things go. It's easy. It's easy. Okay. So they were pegging. They were holding a peg at about 8.3. They let it spill to six. They let it spill to six. This was Yuan's strength and the dollar weakness to the one period. Down, down, down. Subprime was awful. They created heat in the economy, the Chinese, during the subprime period. But, but, but the Shanghai Accord 2016, a little bit of weakness uh, was acquired. Then the dollar got into trouble again and the stock market crash down. Then strong, 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 strong again, the one. And then again, more problems for China how they took on COVID, that's the March 2020 events back down, and then we've been zigging and zagging. This isn't the most bullish chart. My overall suspicion is you could go further down here. It's, a, it's not clearly a bottoming type chart uh, where the dominance is here. So many people will go, but how? How would a communist country uh, have its currency continue to appreciate? In other words, this going down. Remember, it's USD, C, N, H. Well, I'm not saying anything. It's a bit of a mess. However, on a slightly smaller time frame outside of the monthly, on a slightly smaller time frame within all of this, I'm going to put the lights back on and show you something that could indeed be possible. So, the anti milkshake, the inverse milkshake narrative would be very much like something like this. We get some short term period of strength for the dollar. That is a classic three rising method, by the way, where you get an upside pole, drifting candles, and then another upside pole. It's like a small tactical version of a bull flag. Anyway, let's say you go a bit higher, 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 tap out, and you come and you stay roughly within these boundaries of what I've drawn here in blue make it a bit higher up a right shoulder now that right shoulder would go hand in hand with this over here as a left shoulder and a major head you can learn about our complex head and shoulder theory uh, and how we utilize hvfs in there and when we use what in terms of various forms of scaling and neckline projections. Now, one of the targets I've come up with that comes out of this larger head and shoulder is that you do end up making these targets. You have a rally and then we get a second instead of dollar strength, we get a second spell of downside against the Chinese one, which could mean weakness. Now, this dovetails rather nicely with our macro gold uh, versus silver ratio 
also head and shoulders chart structure. So this could see the one gaining, the dollar losing and gold gaining um, and, and silver gaining even more uh, in a precious metals bull market that is highlighting serious dollar weakness. So a rally now, but weakness later, not necessarily too far off. Um, quarter one, quarter two, who knows? Timings, let's not even get into that one. There's enough variables already in this. So just a quick reminder of that gold-silver ratio, if you're new to our channel and have never watched it, um, the gold-silver ratio uh, discussion is around the uh, relationship between silver ounces and gold ounces. And we have been doing technical analysis on that. And we have highlighted this key finding that is that there are macro head and shoulders potentially in play here. And we've been awaiting for some time. Let's put the lines back on. Whoops, did I choose the right thing? I chose the silver price, which is crashing. I meant the one above it. Of this particular blue head and shoulders. Again, because of the dollar dominance and metals turning down, especially we'll keep an eye on palladium as well. It's my favorite for the one for hedging downside uh, with it you're getting a potentially violent more volatile shoulder here over the flatter and longer longer by time frame shoulder there that points to increased volatility coming in which is often typical before a key downside break so if this turns that would mean silver is going up faster than gold or Silver is not going down as fast as gold. That is rarely the case. Uh, but you could have a short shortage or a shortfall on silver um, that could see silver hold its value and gold go down. But generally, if this ratio is going down, they're both going up, just silver more so. Generally, not exclusively, generally. So the, the, the probability pick is that. A triggering of this downside ratio would almost certainly be accompanied with caution on the dollar in most instances again generally you can and will have a flippening event one day where the dollar is going up and metals are going up too and that could happen but a down sell in the gold silver ratio generally will also be associated with weakness in the dollar think the usd c and h um, so it's interesting to see those relationships hong kong dollar getting weak relative to the dollar, even when the dollar was weak, it's being bled out like a pig and it will be tapered off. Uh, yuan strong. So any strength of Hong Kong is bleeding into the yuan. And as a result, I think that we will see the death or certainly the collapse of the peg at some point uh, with regards to that. But this could point to dollar weakness, but hey, it's going up. It looked like a top there, two big hammers. Great non-farm number. Hey, dollar strong. Gold got hit. Now let's touch on gold. Let's touch on gold because we said it was at a key technical level, which indeed it was. So let's go back up to the weekly and show you that key technical level. There's a line that we have drawn over here. And in fact, I'll make it a tiny bit more solid that we've never really strayed too much through. And it is largely a macro continuation pattern so i was expecting don't forget we were trading up around here this is a week now and as you can see we subsequently lower but we were on friday if we go to the daily trading up in and around those levels coming up to kissing it and there was broadening structures involved yeah running out of momentum megaphone on a bull pole that's right after rising wedge squeak squeeze outs as well to the top side so you kissed the key level as you did once and twice before at the previous highs here you did a, a reach and die for the 2075 the first was your strongest so you are potentially in a space where metals can come off now for a while that's great for getting your mining shares by the way because the mining shares were just starting to look like they were going to get headway so the next run i think is going to be great for mining shares if we get out of this. But how far will that next run be? Well, this could come all the way down and bounce on our splitter, the halfway mark. It's common that splitters have that kind of interaction. 
and then react and go back up. Technically, it's even more bearish and even more possible. Uh, I wouldn't say more possible, but it could interact with the 1700 level and go to the lows here again and continue to extend this flag. However, given where the gold and silver ratio is set up, that would require the gold and silver ratio shoulder probably getting too high that the entire head and shoulder idea on the gold silver ratio would be abandoned and you end up with something different. So we're talking so many mind bending potential possibilities and this is pattern scenario casting that you're getting here with us today. Uh, an example of that. In short on the gold and silver ratio if I just put the eye off for a minute you could get this pattern extend even longer on something like that. Longer run, I would say the breakdown is still down, but you could get this going all the way up to here. That destroys the head and shoulder once you get too big a shoulder, particularly if you were to get after a while into the upper half. And obviously the minute you've gone higher than the head, that's an absolute death to any head and shoulder possibilities. So that would be a, another point where the head and scenar shoulder scenario is gone. However, what you would be left with is a broadening structure scenario, which would still insinuate and imply. I don't think we've got it in us to go that far because that's bearish for precious metals generally. Uh, I don't think we've got it in us. I think um, we could turn soon in this range or we could go to the splitter is my favored example. Uh, and then return rather hard. So that again points to maybe dollar turn for a bit, but not necessarily over in terms of pressure on the dollar. Many people will talk fundamental narratives. Oh, the bricks, the, the stuff and all of that. You have to remember that all the liquidity is still in dollars for all the institutional systems and the banking system. So even when you have got a better structure, you still have to put other systems in places to replicate the derivative markets, the institutional markets, the money markets, all of these various things. And you need that item of currency that you've created to have more confidence or to have a structure that engenders more confidence than the dollar itself, which is the established king with all the liquidity. So you need to see lots of liquidity, lots of bugs are ironed out. You're going to probably need to see some link to gold uh, and just to even get people to think of trusting it. Um, and who knows? So we talk of this alternative. It could just come by the petrol oil being sold in yuan, rimbi, rubles, rands, etc. Uh, and as a result, you slowly see the need for dollars reducing and you see a slow whimpering death. Who knows what that will take? Are we looking at it now? I don't know. But that's how this this shoulder on this greater macro set up again a potential head and shoulder which I assess could be happening in this scenario. already a warning that this is quite a, broad, uh, a higher shoulder than this one. That's okay because it's more volatile. It went up and came down harder while this was a large part of not this shoulder, but kind of a trapezius. I like to call it a, a power lifters trapezius of low volatility grinding up. So structurally, it's a complexity. We know how to deal with this, but we need to see this guy coming down. At the moment, these two green candles look pretty strong. So we have to watch uh, and wait. Don't forget, this is just after the news events of all of non-farm. So we are in our mind. We have all of these various permutations and one of them is going to start disqualifying itself and looking off and another one is going to start looking better. And until we know, this video is way too early to tell. Um, however, it is there to tell you of the possible permutations and combinations of what's going down. Um, and to remind you that uh, this great central bank digital token scheme, the great reset, uh, the transition from a dollar world economy to something else 
is under play and central banks add volatility they don't remove it uh, i'm going to show you one uh, go back to the currencies and show you something else let's go back to a favorite that we've spoken about before and many people will say whatever happened to that or whatever the case may be whenever you are doing things on macro time frames you have to learn to wait and sit on your hands and there are many a false dawn before the big main enchilada event comes but when it does it can be the event to end all events so having spoken of the head and shoulders on the gold and silver and that that's probably bearish for the dollar having spoken of the chinese yuan and uh, there's downside targets to make and there's a possibility of another head and shoulders remember possibilities come and go not every three bumps in the road is uh, performing head and shoulder to a target however when we look at this uh, fella which is our uh, regularly referred to usd korean one uh, we do love that structure and we've done many a draw and we were early on it to our own cost and detriment which is often the case on big time frame setups so the question becomes is this a bottom also for the usd korean one well since i started watching it it was there 1256 and it's already gone up to 1261 so at the moment it's moving quite promptly but that's very early to call a third low uh, in this particular structure but we expect in the event of the dollar milkshake eventualities which is the exact opposite i suspect of gold silver pumping by the dump the dumping of the head and shoulder so one of these scenarios could be wrong is there a scenario where both could be wrong probably yes and we both could be right possibly yes but it's highly likely that one has to be wrong so something we're scenarioing here is possibly wrong we are detectives there's we're getting conflicting clues um, it looks like a lady lipstick on the cigarette butt by the crime scene you know high heels in the dirt but then hang on the person was strangled by brute force well hold on that doesn't point you know there's we've got to we've got to sift through the clues a little bit here um, so is this a bottom well this volatility points to an ramp and then a very strong dump let's drop from the monthly into the weekly time frame and see why this seems to be a rather impulsive move again the channel the break the gap and trading up now it's the first swallow which does not as i often say a spring make but it could turn out to be the first swallow at a later point you've got 1300 to make am i suggesting you should run in there and go long no uh, you could have a gap closure from the sunday open um, there's there's many more meaningful weeks and news events to occur the the course of fx markets have not simply been plotted for the next six months just by the single week but it was one of the most important weeks that we have had um, so what comes next will likely go towards either validating this you're going to continue to see upside you're going to continue to see people that are maybe too short the dollar that are doing um, covering um, or you're going to start to see some churn chop gap fills to the downside and a little bit of slowing down taking it more methodically or you might actually see a highly impulsive move back down and the original polls being taken back and it was a storm in a teacup piece of news um, all of these things could potentially be possible and they're seminally important however do not underestimate the key point of this video after a data heavy week with the major players reporting three core central banks and a non-farm payrolls employment number in a highly interest rate inflation central bank driven global totalitarian economy world that we live in that a key pivot could be possible okay i'm francis hunt the market sniper we've discussed this at length we've shown you some charts don't forget to hit the like uh, and share with a friend and also pop over to themarketsniper.com if you think you've got value you'd like to book a call and see how we'll be trading it one other trade which are because you've stayed right to the end thank you uh, i'm going to give you one other trade that we see that actually implies short and medium some continuation possible of the uh, dollar strength and that is the usd indian rupee i have some friends uh, and fans uh, who will be delighted to get the rupee covered i'm hoping 
anyway i don't know maybe i should check with him first take me to the rupee take me to the rupee oh there it is it's showing it to me so this particular one um, available on ig and also if following our euro knock there's many trades you will be missing um, this one has moved we don't suggest you necessarily chase in by the way you don't have the benefit of our method and when we were in or not uh, this one actually gapped on sunday so i was not in uh, this when we chose but it's our expectation that you will at least get uh, through the to the 84s and you'll probably breach 85 in quite short succession so that points to an upside continuation very similar to the one over there which has performed rather well as well so bigger structure that is suggesting that against an emerging market remember that doesn't mean the dollar is whipping the euro as well but against an emerging market like the indian rupee which has a bad habit of shedding value unfortunately for our indian friends um, let's just give you the monthly take to make sure that that perspective is not lost that is your rupee over the last month um you are here and our suspicion is you squeeze a little higher again could we be wrong we could if we are it's likely to be 180 degrees wrong um not slightly wrong we don't do slightly wrong we do properly wrong um and that would be something there but however i suspect that will continue for a pop out the top however if that dollar then subsequently turns has a short period of uh, stop you could come back into the range it's going to depend a lot on the dollar but the indian rupee is looking broadly pretty much under stress also wherever you trade bear in mind there's a carry cost by the different uh, differences in the interest rate parities so again if you don't know anything about trading you don't know about the carry costs of holding and the interest rates uh, parity differentials and how much it will cost to hold check these things out for yourself get proper education don't speculate with anything you can't lose this is a non-advisory channel we are talking about our trading experiences and saying hey watch this we think it may go up uh, okay with that thank you for watching to the end i hope you enjoy uh, the rupee trade uh, be careful of chasing too hard you've got to have a stop loss don't ruin your risk reward ratio is my personal opinion till next time i'll catch you later thanks for watching